So in this video we're going to use the oscilloscope and an amp clamp to check the injector circuit. If you haven't seen it already make sure you go and check out the first video where we look at injector voltage waveforms. So we're going to use this amp clamp and an oscilloscope to measure the current through the injector circuit and it's going to be able to tell us a few things. We'll be able to see that the circuit's connected, we'll be able to compare each injector to see if there's a resistance issue on any of the individual circuits, we'll be able to see that the injector is mechanically opening and we'll also be able to check for an internal short circuit. So a lot of the training I've been on in the past, you know, going back a long time now, a lot of the focus was on the injector voltage measurements. And actually you can, you can tell quite a lot from measuring the current. I've just got one of these cheap Hantec CC65 amp clamps here. Um, and I'm gonna be using that with my favorite, the PicoScope 2204A. And if you're interested in any of these products, then check out the links in the description. So another bonus with this test is it's really quite easy. It's non-intrusive, so you haven't got to get your back probes out, you know, probing the back of them connectors, potentially damaging them. We've all been there. However, it can be quite difficult to access on some engines. You know, you might have quite a few covers over the injectors. On the other side of that, you might have a car where there's a fuse that supplies all of the injectors. If that's the case, then you can use a fuse link and check them all at the same time. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that on this car. So let's start it up and see what we've got. Okay, so the scope's running. We've already got it connected up to the injector ground, so we can see that signal there. That'll be good for reference when we're just talking through the waveforms that we've got. So I'm gonna connect this up to channel A, and I'm gonna select the one millivolt per 10 milliamps. And on the PicoScope software, you can actually use the 60 amp current clamp in 20 amp mode. That's the same as what we've got here. And I'm gonna select the scale of two amps. Okay, it's connected up. So it doesn't matter which wire you go around. Okay, so I've gone around one wire there and the other wire, they're both the same. The only thing you might wanna watch out for is the polarity of the amp clamp. So you put it the other way around, you get an upside down pattern. Okay, so there we've got the current reading for the injector we're measuring. We can see that in line with the injector ground switch there. But we can see that they line up. So, so when the injector switch on, the current ramps up and then plateaus, and then we switch the injector off, it drops off. So what can we tell from this waveform we've got here? So we're looking for a nice smooth ramp up. And the reason it doesn't just go straight up is because of a, a phenomenon called self-inductance. So because we've got a coil there, as we put current through the coil, it generates a magnetic field around itself and almost creates an opposition to flow through the coil. So that's why we get a steady increase there. We can see here as well, we get like a bit of a kink. Can you see that? So it goes up and then it kinks up a bit that's mechanical movement. So that's showing us that the injector is opening. So we can see the injector opening here and we can see it closing here. And then it flattens out and drops off. So we can use our ohms law here. So the injector itself is around 13 ohms. We've got about 13, 14 volts battery voltage. If we use ohms law there, we should have about one amp, which works out for us here. So you could actually use that to work out if you've got a resistance issue by checking all the injectors and they should all be around the same current. So something else that I thought was really good is you can actually tell for internal short circuits on the coil. So if that current ramp actually spikes up a bit at the beginning and it tells us that we've got a short circuit and we can simulate that. So all I'm going to do is short out the injector with this uh, resistor. Okay, see that? So ignore the fact that the current has increased, that's because I've put another, another resistor in there, but what we're interested in looking at is where the 
current here shoots up rather than ramping up and then it gradually climbs. We can still see it's opening um, but that shoot up there shows us that we've potentially got a short circuit in the coil. So there we go, from the amp clamp test there we can see quite a bit internal short circuits, we can see that it's opening and also checking the resistance in the circuit comparing it to others. If you haven't seen it already make sure you go and check out the first video where we look at injector voltage waveforms.